Good afternoon, everyone, especially to our dear faculty trailblazers who um, say yes for the invitation to be our speaker this afternoon. I am Jasper J. Jimintisa, the program head for Innovative Teaching Series. So it convos is like a particular CITL program such as sharing of flexible teaching experience and bass buffet. Like sharing of FLT and bass buffet, Ed Convos is a platform where experts take the stage to share their best pedagogical practices to the faculty members of the university. Ed Convos tagline, share, influence, educate, epitomizes the CITL's purpose of the program, which are to share best practices of a specific pedagogical areas, to influence instructors, and professor towards augmenting and innovating their instructions and to incorporate and implement the practices and ideas in class to educate the learners in best ways possible. On behalf of our director, engineer Eileen Isheras, I welcome you all for today's event. Thank you very much. For our first speaker, we have Professor Prosebet Bacarisas for the topic, Authentic Assessment, Transitioning from Seeing to Doing. Before the onset of the pandemic, international assessments like the third International Mathematics and Science Survey, and then PISA, or the Programs for International Student Assessments, show that 80% of Filipino students lag behind in proficiencies in reading and in math as well as in science. Of course, as an educator, we acknowledge that there are lots of factors behind these results. Now, here is more. According to the World Bank report, the learning crisis worsened and even after the pandemic. Many of our Filipino students are in our classrooms. They attend their classes. Yet, the big question is why is this not shown in their performance? Now, one of the biggest challenge or challenges faced by educators, including me, uh, because I have been in the teaching world for more than two decades already. Uh, it is difficult for me, really, to get students to engage actively in the learning process. And I know you share the same feelings, right? Okay, but why? Why is it that some students may be disinterested, unmotivated, or have limited attention spans? They may have different backgrounds or learning styles that make it challenging for us to effectively communicate with them. And here is the catch. Schools that we are found to be at the top ranks when we talk about international assessments, they have one thing in common. And yes, well, you are right. They use authentic assessments and do not rely much on pencil and paper tests or we call it traditional assessments. So authentic assessment is a topic that gained increasing attention now in recent years especially for educators because they have come to recognize the limitations of traditional assessments and the need for a more student-centered approach to learning. Uh, what makes it tougher or challenging is how we educators, those who are here you know, in the venue, can transition from saying to doing. So let us start first on defining what authentic assessment is. Simply put, it is an assessment that evaluates 
a student's ability to apply what they have learned in real situations. Now, authentic assessments goes beyond testing students' memorization skills. It measures the ability to use the knowledge and skills in meaningful and relevant ways. It can be through writing essays, creating projects, dioramas, brochures, or presenting ideas in front of an audience. So why is authentic assessment important? In traditional assessments, students are only asked to simply recall, you know, recall information. But authentic assessment allows students to showcase their understanding and application of what they have learned. So authentic assessment is a better measure you know, of a student's ability to transfer knowledge to the real world, which is the ultimate goal of education. So let's dive in and discover how we can design authentic assessments that promote student success and meaningful learning outcomes. Now, let me introduce to you the GRASP model. I know probably that some of you have heard this. No? Okay, so a GRASP model is an essential component of the Understanding by Design framework, which is a popular approach in industry, uh, instructional design. So the GRASP model helps to identify what are the key components of a successful learning experience. And it also provides a framework for designing effective performance tasks. Now, let me walk you through on how it's done. Now, example, you want to design an assessment or an authentic performance task for pre-service teachers. Allow me, no? Because I belong to the College of Science and Technology Education. Okay, so um, yeah, you are designing an authentic task for the PSTs or the pre-service teachers. Now, using GRASP, the following steps can be taken. So it starts with G. No, it starts with G or goals. The first step is to identify the learning goals and objectives that the assessment should measure. So this includes the teacher's ability to create a lesson plan, uh, teacher's ability to teach you know, or manage a classroom, as well as assess students' learning. Now, once you have identified the goal, this time we'll proceed to the R or the role. So this refers to, say, pre-service teacher will play in the assessment. Okay, like this might include their role as creator of learning plans or teaching a class, something like that. Okay, now we are down to A, no, which is audience. The audience for the assessment should be clearly identified. Now, who are the audience? Since they will be teachers, so of course, oh, students, no? Or it can be a mentor teacher or a peer. So that's for audience. Then, let's go for the S, which is situation. So this is a situation or a condition in which the assessment will take place. So this could be a specific subject or a grade level. So working with a particular group of students or addressing a specific issue or challenge. Now we are now for the P, which is performance. Identify the performance task 
or activities that the pre-service teachers will be evaluated on. So, like creating a lesson plan, okay, or managing a classroom. Now, we're down to the last S, no? or for standards. Take note, grasp. So, this refers to criteria for success, no? or the standards which uh, is developed for basis no? for success. So, this time, rubrics can be of great help. Now, with these steps, an authentic assessment for pre-service teachers could be designed using the GRASP model. Again, let's recall GRASP. G stands for goal. R for role. A for audience. S for situation. And P performance. And lastly, S for standards. Oh, very good children. Okay, now I hope that you have a good grasp with the grasp model. Okay, you know what? The first time I encountered grasp or the understanding by design, no, by Grant Wiggins and Jay Maktai, I was really mesmerized. Would have like star star ang mata, no? Until, uh, until now, I still use it you know, in my classes. Murag wala ko na sayo early 2000 siya no work nila ni Grant Wiggins of Magtay. Now, so the grass design tool can help us construct a scenario no, for authentic performance task. Now, let's get into the heart of the matter. Mura gugma ba? Lahira yun ko no, kung hingnan ka, nagihigugma ka. Kaysa, ipakita niya ang iyang gugma. Right? So, it is one thing to say that we value authentic assessment and its benefit for students' learning. But, it's another thing entirely to actually implement it in our classrooms and schools. So, the transition from saying to doing really requires a shift in mindset and a commitment to making authentic assessment a priority. So moving from saying to doing in authentic assessment involves shifting the focus of assessment from measuring students what, sorry, what students know about the subject to evaluating their ability to use the knowledge to solve problems, complete tasks, or create something new. So here are some of the concrete steps we can take to make these transition. So what are these steps? Number one, you have to define the learning outcomes. So start by defining clearly the learning outcomes you want your students to achieve. So before uh, these outcomes were called SMART, I think you know that. So S for specific, M for measurable, A attainable, attainable and R means related no, to real world applications of the subject, and T for time bounded. Now. Smart became smarter. Don't you know that? Okay. So, sana all. No, that is with ER. So, smart became smarter. This means that the objectives must be specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable, relevant, and time-bounded, as, or as well as E, that is to be evaluated, on a regular basis and are re recognized when achieved or revisited when not. So that makes it smarter. Now number two, create tasks or projects that would require students to apply their knowledge and skills in realistic and complex situations. 
these tasks should reflect the challenges and demand that students will face in their future professional or personal careers. Or number three, provide opportunities for feedback. So student or ass assessment rather should be a process of learning not just a measure of learning. So therefore, it is really important to provide opportunities for students to receive feedback throughout the assessment process so they can learn from their mistakes and improve their performance. Number four, use multiple measures Authentic assessment is not limited to single test or exam. No? It should involve multiple measures that capture their, the different aspects of students' knowledge and skills. For example, a project may be accompanied by a written reflection or a presentation. So that's four. Now that, this time, we're going to proceed to the fifth step. This is very important. Collaborate with colleagues. So authentic assessment may require collaboration you know, among teachers or across subject areas to ensure that tasks and assessments are aligned with the learning outcomes and would reflect the demands of the real world. So in summary, transitioning from saying to doing in authentic assessment involves creating tasks that is contextualized or must reflect the real world challenges and it also provide opportunities for students to apply their knowledge and receive feedback. So by embracing authentic assessment, we can help our students develop the skills they need for them to succeed in their future careers. Now, I hope that you will all take the challenge. Let us move from simply saying, I know what authentic assessment is. No, and I know also its benefits. But let us join hands as we transition from saying to doing. I encourage you all here present to work together and help create a culture, take note, help create a culture of authentic assessment. So use authentic assessment in your classrooms. Take the lead you know, in effecting the change and share it with your colleagues. So knowledge without action is useless. I remember one phrase. It is like a boat on a dry land. So I encourage you all to take the knowledge you gained and turn them into action. Now this can be one of the many ways you know, that can help us address the education crisis in our country. Thank you for your time. To talk to us on designing discussion and exercises that gives the student the impression that they are at school in an online setting. Let's welcome Engineer Julius J. Gonzalez. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I kaniya feeling kaya familiar <laughs> sa mga feeling. This is the feeling when I first face my student kung Pinakauna, beto ni mga lecture, kura kulba. Kulbahan kayo. So, my, um, my topic is divided into three parts. This goes, uh, it goes, the part, the first part is about sharing the challenges in uh, online setup. And then, how I, I, how I designed discussions and exercises to emulate the uh, in-person na classroom setup and then uh, the uh, the results and feedbacks of this setup. So first, uh, there are various of 
um, problems that we face during the pandemic, right? That we have, uh, if you look through uh, research journals uh, in every website, there are at least 10 problems we face. But I have summarized them into three. So the first problem is the connectivity. Then the second one is the platform. The third one is the lack of motivation. And these are true for students and uh, teachers, right? So connectivity is not limited to uh, the financial na, uh, part. Dili lang kay dili na to ma-afford ang connection. Ang um, isa pod ka factor sa connectivity is the location, right? And then aside sa location, dili mo ma-afford ang um, kon pa gyud ang signal. Yeah, dili tanan students, dili tanan teachers nga na signal. Na to one time nga uh, uh, sa phone case 2020, student ako ito na time na experience na ako nga mong teacher is wala ka siya connection. So, among gibuhat, among gi, yang i-deliver yang uh, yang lecture by, via kwan, tawag lang, mag-call lang siya sa among um, phone. Wala wala presentations, wala whatsoever, wala, wala mga visual aids. This is a problem. Another one, the platform. Dili lang ang kwan, dili lang uh, problem na to nga uh, atong i-teach ang platform sa students. Kita pud biya mag-learn pa ta, mag pa ta kung unsaon paggamit sa flat platform. So uh, sa atong time sa pandemic, dili lang dili lang ta teacher, dili lang ta uh, mga advisors, dili lang lecturers, na mo ta mga vloggers no mga teachers ng vloggers, na mong IT. They learn the platform, they teach the platform they learn to code sa mga quiz no sa ustep di ba i-code man to na to mga problems and then uh, napagi yung mga kuan mga videos nga atong i-record atong i-upload sa YouTube or unsa pa nang mga uh, website nga pwede nato i-hatag ang link sa to mga students and the most important thing on this uh, part of the pandemic is the lack of motivation sa katumangon niya tayo ang mga students dili na nila ma-feel ang classroom kaya naraman sila sa balay there are at uh, mga um, distractions kay na ay conflict between household responsibilities and then uh, na, na pag-iikuan kanayang classroom mga lectures nga ilang tanahon mga videos mga exams and then ang makawala sila ng motivation is the uh, mga games free kay sila mag kuan mag access og mga games kana naman sila ay gadget no tagan sila gadget then ang mga games pwede nila ma-access bisan pag kuan bisan pag uh, during lectures kung makabantay ta also um ang pag kuan pod ang um, makamot ang wala makawal maka demotivate sa mga students is the um the lack of teacher scaffold dili na nila makontak nila mga teachers dili nila, dili sila maka uh, maka question diretso samot na if recorded lang ang video nga yatag sila so to solve these uh, problems akong gi design ako ang discussion into two parts okay para may mo siyang flexible nga learning for the student dili lang maka access na ang maka access dili lang tong na internet all the time maka access pud tong dili maka attend sa mga lectures so it is uh, flexible siya nga part nga uh, pwede sila mo adto sa koa sa office then pwede pud sila mo kuan sa pa pwede pud sila mo tawag sa koa or mo chat or sa messenger and kanang online nga setup is give give flex pagyud og ayo napatay asynchronous and mga synchronous nga mga activities para bisan pag dili online ang teacher nagyapon sila access sa mga materials so what I did is is that I use the Google uh, Google Meet, Google Meet, then the Jamboard. Jamboard is like a whiteboard, virtual whiteboard. We do have magsulat sa Jamboard using your mouse or na kay uh, electronic pen. And then dili lang ikaw pwede magsulat sa Jamboard, pwede pun magsulat imo ang student. Kung 
na kayo gusto ipaparticipate, pwede sila man participate using jam, Jamboard. So, in that way, they, you can let the students share the way they uh, solve the problems. Sa so, ako ang good, I teach uh, physics atong, uh, atong pandemic. So, the problem is how to evaluate their uh, process. Dili lang ang final answer, kaya na may times nga, maingon sila nga, Sir, nasayop lang ako final answer kaya na negative na ako ni nga part. So, dili sila completely kanang wala gyud nay wala gyud nay balaan na lay na lay part sa solution nga nasayop kabalo sila sa process na lang sila part nga na miss ina na akong gusto nga malikayan sa ko ang uh, classroom so uh, to mitigate that problem ang um, akong gibuhat ma nila para pud ma nila ang classroom sa ilang balay gipagamit nako sa log pen and paper para mag-answer. Isulat ilang solution sa paper. As much as possible, dapat complete solution. Then take a picture of their solution. Then i-upload nila sa Google Drive. In that way, uh, dili na ko ma dili na dili ko mag-base sa ilang final answer. Magtanaw ko sa ilang process. It's like checking lang ang physical nga paper. Picture yung checkan, tanaw ni mo ang ilang solution. Then you decide kung sakto ba ilang process. Nag-follow ba sila sa mong gitudlo? Also, using Jamboard, katoy lang solution, pwede nila i-share sa ila ang mga classmates. No? Pwede, pwede ka manawag o every, uh, every meeting, manawag ang one or two student nga mag-share sa ilang solution, sa ilang assignment, sa ilang quizzes using Jamboard. Another thing about Jamboard is that pwede ka mag-screenshot sa solution. Dili na kailangan nga mag-copy pa ang mga students or dili na kailangan nga tanaw nilang whole video para makita nila ang full nga solution. I screenshot ni ang Jamboard, then you have your uh, image nga copy sa ilang sa solution. So mao ang gibuhat ang um, asynchronous ang mga videos I, na ko, i-upload na ako mga videos while ga-discuss ko na ay nag-record upload ang videos sa synchronous, pwede mo attend ang mga students sa lectures sa live ng mga lectures also ang mga activities it can be na ay asynchronous activities na ay synchronous activities ang synchronous activities is when we have our oral recitation ang student can mag-participate and sa, sa synchronous activities ay Leave them, leave them a problem na pwede nila isolve sa ilang balay then they uh, submit their solution via image katong picturean lang nila ila ang paper so mura na sila nasa classroom sa ilang balay kay magamit na sila sila ang actual nga paper o pen as a result um, kato ang student naka-share naka Uh, naka uh, na emulate nila ang classroom sulod sa ilang balay and then um, through this technique po na develop or na promote ang critical thinking skills dili lang uh, poros memorizing na po yung mga applications through their solutions also when answering uh, uh, their quizzes kay nagamit na sila mga papers, mga pens, um, ila ang feel yun kay kuhan. Murag yun siya nasa classroom. Murag yun, murag yun siya sila nag-answer inside the classroom nga na nagbantay sila ang uh, uh, teacher. Also, sa akong part po, ma-assess na po kung yun sa nila ang, kung nakalearn ba sila sa ila ang, uh, sa mga discussions. Yun sa nila pag-solve. I-follow ba nila ang process? then if uh, delay mao ilang final answer then napagyap ng select points okay i think that's all for me our next speaker is dr charito ong her topic is on student interaction good afternoon everyone indeed it's a pleasure to share a topic which is so essential from among the different macro skills and that includes of course uh, student interaction which is something to do with uh, communicative language teaching or 
developing the communication skills of your students. So I'm very certain that uh, in your different classes, although they may not be an English subject uh, unlike mine, that you are that you would like to listen to the ideas of your students, that you are giving them chances to communicate, and that uh, you give them an opportunity to interact with each other. So when we talk about student interaction, uh, we could probably refer to the structuring of the discussion or exercises that will truly inspire student in interaction. Because if these students are not inspired to communicate or to talk, if we are not giving them themes or topics that are essential in their lives as students, then we will not be able to get from them the desired results. So one of the goals that we will be like portraying in the classroom is to enhance the power of open-ended questions. So we have to see to it that our students do not just answer questions that are going to be answered by yes or no. So if, if, the, if these questions are usually asked, for example, in a lecture discussion series in which there is more teacher talk and there is less student interaction, then that would mean that, sad to say, uh, there is a failure in terms of developing the communication skills of the students or that student interaction doesn't have a place in that classroom. Whereas if we are going to believe in the power of open-ended questions, then we could say that we are really trying to develop not only the communication skills of the students, but uh, the, the power to become critical thinkers, to become creative thinkers. And that will make them very much ready for the world of work. And that we could say that uh, being in college life or being in uh, this academy here in USDP, we are trying to prepare our students for that future life which is in the world of work. And one stage or one phase that will bring them to that uh, world of work is through interview. So uh, different authorities or different researchers would say that uh, one of the things that they will look for from a particular person or particular student in terms of interview is that the student or the interviewee is able to answer questions critically, creatively, and that the student is so well versed with the theme and that he or she is able to deliver the, the answers to the, to the questions that are given in a manner that it has, it creates sense and that, of course, there is very strong impact to that specific question. So we could say then that we are able to contribute to the students, uh, to this stage uh, of the student in which we are going to prepare him or her, we are going to prepare them for that future world of work when we are going to talk about or when we develop their ability to communicate through student interaction because there are no other avenues that we could develop them because it's only in that classroom uh, in the four walls of the classroom or nowadays uh, now that we are still in the pandemic uh, we are trying to develop them via our zoom classrooms via uh, the online platforms so when we conduct uh, like asynchronous classes or synchronous classes where students get the chance to communicate uh, with their peers, for example, in Zoom via uh, breakout session rooms. So we could say that uh, based from my experience, uh, I was able to witness that my students really enjoyed talking to each other, communicating when they are given the opportunity to communicate with their peers via this um, discussion platforms uh, in that in those breakout sessions and that when they go back to the main room and then share what whatever was discussed from from that specific room I felt or the class felt that they really had fun and then uh, from that time on they were looking forward to more activities in which student interaction is involved not only that uh, we could also involve our students uh, and develop their communication skills or their student interaction 
via gallery walks. So we might say that gallery walks are only applicable when we are in face-to-face -face classes. No, the answer is no. Because it's still possible even if it's the classes are conducted online. Because they can like share, for example, uh, video presentations or share pictures and then they will move, they, they are given the chance to move from one breakout session room to another and try to check whatever happens in that room. So that will serve as a gallery walk for them. So see, uh, the power of technology also helps uh, student interaction. Another thing is on data exploration for engaging students in groups. So these uh, groups entail collaboration, cooperation, and not only that, fun. So they do have fun, as I, I said earlier, the, uh, they do have fun in terms of communicating with their peers, with their classmates, when they are engaged in certain groups. So they did enjoy, for example, in my classes, they would say, Mom, we are looking forward to more uh, breakout session sessions because uh, we enjoy that particular activity. And then not only one student is given the, the opportunity, for example, to report to the main room, whatever was discussed in that specific room, but each one will have a chance to communicate, to voice out his or her thoughts. And one thing that will also boost their confidence is when we are going to give positive feedback. You know, uh, the word or the, the phrase very good is a commonly used uh, phrase or word or group of words that uh, students might say it's, it had been overused and it becomes very boring. So instead of using very good, probably we could use uh, other terminologies to signify that we really like the output of our students. Yes, so we might say, for example, terrific, wonderful, amazing, awesome, and all those um, positive uh, terminologies. Because as teachers, uh, it's one of the ethics, uh, I don't think I have to share, but I know you are aware that uh, we are not allowed to, it, it's against the code of ethics to say, uh, to tell our students that they are wrong. So. Probably we could say it in a nice manner. Maybe we can call uh, any other answer. Thank you for your response like that. So instead of saying that your answer is wrong, so maybe we can use uh, nice phrases in order to really motivate them uh, to communicate uh, so that strong, uh, the student interaction is given, uh, that student interaction is really present in that classroom. Another is unstructured academic controversies that keep students intrigued. So how do we create instances in the classrooms, uh, whether online or on-site, to make our students really be intrigued so that they will think, uh, they will look forward to the next session that you will have. So we have to create opportunities for them so that there, there is more student interaction and less teacher talk. Because the more that we talk, then the more that, uh, you know, the attention span of students is, according to research, is only 15 minutes maximum. So if we talk, we keep on talk, talking and talking and talking in uh, either on-site or online, then we are not certain. We are not sure anymore if our students are still engaged. So we have to engage them through this academic controversies that will really keep them be intrigued with the lesson. So that's another thing. No. So I should, should say that uh, student interaction really plays an essential component in the development of students' communication skills. And that will, when we develop this uh, student communication skills or student interaction, uh, either online or on-site, then we could say that we are really playing our part as facilitators of learning. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Engineer Antipuesto. He will be talking to us design thinking, dynamic problem solving approach to help learners become creators, innovators, and empathic beings. Good afternoon, everyone. Across the College of Technology programs, we have this uh, course, the Embed Kidnamo Satanan program. This is the design thinking. Mumpuni siya ang flagship, uh, flagship nga program sa CITL. Then, uh, ma-enjoy gig ko og tudlo ani sa mga bata. Uh, when I was in uh, my uh, one year study leave, 
Magwala ko ng balik og duty. Nag-request yun ko nga. Ako na po yung balik og tuglo. Ani. Since uh, we are very few in the college uh, chosen to teach this course, design thinking. It is very fun to teach and very enjoyable for the students. So, diligid sila mabor. Okay. So, uh, let me bring you to my topic, uh, a dynamic, uh, design thinking, a dynamic problem solving approach to help learners become creators, innovators, and empathic beings. Uh, at the early stage of being a student, uh, uh, usually, ang, ang students is, uh, naman sila sa ilang learning process karon after, after four years of five-year program, uh, we, we, we make them uh, professional, di ba? So, ato silang gimold to be, uh, they are the aspiring pro professional someday. So, during the uh, learning process, uh, ginapa-experience na sa College of Technology. Ang mga bata, mahimo silang significance sa community. By using the design thinking, uh, let me introduce to you first the design thinking. No? Uh, design thinking is very international na gigamit sa mga companies, mga dagkuk na company like IBM, the uh, uh, Ford, uh, such like Apple, gagamit sila mga design thinking to innovate something. Okay? So, this design thinking is a uh, gi-adapt na karon sa college of technology. Gi-embed na mo sa tanan gin na mga program. So, naagin na siya nga course. So, first step pa is a uh, stage of design thinking. So, during the first uh, stage sa design thinking process is uh, we taught the students uh, how to enhance and boost their uh, critical thinking skills. So, gapa activities mi sa ila like uh, like sa ako, gapa activities to maribas puzzle, like that. Kinsa ba nakabalo sa itong maribas puzzle? Marami ka, marami tao pag mag-activity ang mga bata ni ma-intrigued kayo sila. Like Dr. Ong, you mentioned me tao nga, kanabi tao Gusto pa sila mag for the next chapter na po sa ibang topic. Bitaw nga, murabag ka ng series na sa Lida ba nga, murag din sila ganahan ng putlon. So, kung maato ma ma na ma-employ sa mga bata, uh, ma-motivate sila og study. The first thing is first, again, sa, first uh, sa design thinking is we enhance and uh, the critical thinking sa mga bata. Dahil yun, syempre, ang motivations na adin na. Okay? Uh, techniques on empathizing with the users. Okay, so... Ang design thinking, uh, gihimo na naman siya nga partner sa technical research nga program, ang uh, course. Okay? So, uh, since uh, mag-innovate man sila sa ilahang thesis, so, uh, ginabuhat na ko is, uh, we, I religiously follow the modules that are being crafted sa design thinking. Okay? Which is crafted by uh, Engineer Lloyd Stampa. Okay? So, uh, first niya is, uh, ginatudluan ako mga bata o kanang uh, kanap itong empathizing being a user. For example, if we, they are targeting um, mag-innovate sila o something like cell phone, uh, mag-innovate sila something o kanang equipment. Okay, buta na to, a kompreso. Okay? So, ang ilang target ang nga community is those uh, user of that equipment. So, they go to the communities. So, at the early stage, a long learning process, nag-involve na sila sa community. The fact na ako i-share uh, sa inyo, no? na-study sa amo ang, uh, sa amo ang college nga, gigamit na sa community garon uh, sa Calabay-Labay, El Salvador. Then, naan na po yung lain ng mga studies, nga gigamit na po siya sa lain na po ng program sa the same college of technology. So, nalipay ang mga bata, no? nga nag-graduate sila, nga makita nila nga gigamit sa community ang ilahang uh, equipment, nga gi innovate. Okay. So, how to come up this uh, innovation? Dili basta-basta kay gusto na ko mag-innovate ana, mag-create na din ko ana. They go to the community. So, naana sa among module no. Kita ginatudluan na mo sila nga paadto gid sila sa community to conduct interview, open-ended questions. Nga kana bitaw ang mga users mas daghan ang ilang isulti kaysa nag-interview para makuha, masort na gin nato ang ilahang mga pain points nila, kanabitong ilahang mga mulok sa ilahang uh, equipment ka gigamit para ma ma masort giyod sa interviewee eh, kung unsa gid ay gikinahanglan sa community. Kaya wa may pulos ang atong innovation kung after ana na 
Nara na sa ato ang classroom niya, lugmog na niya, rajik di sa bata, tumiyagi, wala na. Five years, three years, latak na dayon. Nag-design taong innovations, we empathize the feeling of the users. So, inaana mo ginatudlo sa bata. Okay, next. Prototyping and testing solutions. So, sa pagkandak nilang interview, so, naana sila yung mga data, dito na dahil, nilang pang-sort nila dito. Anto, naka first stage, naka-create na rin sila analysis and design. Analyze sila niya, design dayon. yun. Pag na sila, initial nga design. No? After, ana, katong ilang mga prototype, testing solutions, i-present na po ito nilang balik dito sa ilang interview. Kini sir, kini ma'am, ganahan mo, ani, ano, ano, ano. Mungin pa man din ang mga user, wala, kulang pa man din siya, diridong. Okay? So, design thinking in technology innovation number two. User-centered design for technology products. User-centered, when we say user-centered, unsay gusto yun sa user, not kung unsay gusto sa innovator. At the end of the day, ang mupalit, ang mupinifit sa imuhang innovation is the community, not you as an innovator. Okay? User-centered and designed for technology products. That is why ang mga bata, muadtogit sila sa community. Now, kay pandemic man, so, diha lang sa ilang palibot. Align sa ilang program like electronics, electrical, unsa sila automotive, kung unsa ilang alignment mo ito ang uh, project na pagabuhaton. Okay? So, number three. Empathy and user-centered design. Empathy mapping. So, empathy mapping. So, kung nag-interview sila like uh, cellphone user, uh, di feel po nga sila po ang user anang ng cellphone. So, kung unsay pain nila to silang ipang interview, i feel po nila nga sila gagamit ato para ma-feel po nila kung unsay feeling sa user. Okay? So, ingon pa ni Elon Musk, uh, the next technology would be the empathy. Okay? So, maglisod da og market sa ato ang mga products sa mga bata kung we innovate kung unsay gusto na to. Okay? The last one is user testing and feedbacking. So, before ni siya, I create nila nga equipment na yun himuon nila ni nga uh, concept, the pitching process the pitching okay? so ang mga bata ni abot sa punto nga nag-away gin sila by group kay mag pitching na gani ang isa ang isa ka grupo, mo critic man nito sila man ang mo critic ang mga uban grupo and then the other group uh, sees uh, something mo criticize a design okay So, until such time nga nag-aaway din sila din. And this is the part of creating innovation. Naagi sometimes ang innovator na ma-feel nila nga mula gina-discriminate ilang innovations. But, it is a part of uh, development. It's because, at the end of the day, as I had uh, quoted earlier, we are not the users. We innovators are not the users. It's the community, target community. So these students learn very much in their uh, design thinking courses uh, para pagtabok nila sa ilang thesis program na after sa design thinking, ang product ani is the concept. Okay? Concept. So nana sila yung concept. Tuloy-tuloy na rin napaingon sa thesis. Di na sila magka-problema. Okay? So I, I think uh, kulang kayo ang 15 minutes to share. Okay? Daghan pa, daghan pa kami so, supposedly detail but I think uh, nahatag na ako ang uh, akong uh, kining uh, experience in teaching the design thinking. Uh, thank you and good afternoon.